My name is Greg Chaplin. I'm a physical therapist and certified strength conditioning specialist. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question, why do heel elevated squats? We're going to go through the benefits of heel elevated squats, the equipment that you're going to need, and a couple of the common mistakes. And we're going to demonstrate and explain all this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now the number one thing that the heel elevated squats can allow you to do is to shift your weight back. By shifting the weight back, the back side of the body is going to be a little bit more open. And this is going to improve range of motion at the knee, the hip, as well as the ankle. By getting the weight back, improving that range of motion, we're usually able to hit a much greater squat depth. And so this way you can actually use a squat to enhance your ability to perform other variations of squatting. So when we look at the most common problems that we're going to see in a squat, they all have to do with an excessive weight shift forward. We can see this in the knees, either as knees turning too far out or too far in. If you're the person who has knees that are turning too far in, what you typically have is a pelvis that's moving a little bit further forward at the top of the pelvis than the bottom. This is gonna produce a position of the muscles to turn the legs in as you do a squat, and that's gonna look a little bit like this. When you get up onto the heel elevation, what's gonna happen is you're gonna bring the top of that pelvis back a little bit relative to the bottom, and that's going to reorient this musculature so that you don't get as much turn in at the knees when you perform your squat. If you're that person whose knees turn out excessively when you squat, or you tend to look bow-legged, what you have is a pelvis that's relatively vertical, but getting pushed forward, causing external rotation of the hip and this turned out appearance at the knees. If we then move you back using the heel elevation, the legs come into a little bit more internal rotation and you're able to squat without the knees coming out toward the side. Now the heel elevated squat can also help reduce pain that's associated with not being able to manage the forward weight shift in other squatting variations. So if you're having discomfort in the knees, in the hips, or the ankles with squatting, this may help to alleviate that pain as you reacquire the ability to keep that weight shifted back. And one of the common problems that people run into when performing squats is that Perceived limitations in ankle mobility will stop the knees from bending forward comfortably. What the wedge allows you to do is to bring the knees further forward over the toes while keeping the weight back, which usually results in more comfortable loading of the ankles and knees. And the last benefit is a more upright trunk position when you perform the squat. So what really separates a squat from more of a hinge is an upright trunk position. If you achieve that upright trunk position effectively, you're going to be able to reduce the workload and stress placed on your back. And for all you people out there worried about the butt wink, this also means you'll be able to get the upper body back so you won't have to wink way under with that butt. Now I'm going to show you how I coach the heels elevated squat, but before we get into this demonstration, I'm going to answer one of the most commonly asked questions, which is if you can use books under your heels instead of a ramp or a wedge. And the answer to that is actually going to be no because when you have your foot on a ramp or a wedge, it's gonna be nice and flat. And then once you elevate just the heels, it's gonna actually bend back the big toe. It's gonna to change the position of the foot and also change your ability to uh, execute this effectively. Now, in order to elevate the heel appropriately in this exercise, you can use either a foam wedge, you could use the metal individual wedges, which are gonna allow you to bring the feet wider, or if you're a complete nut job, you could actually build a huge one yourself. And if you're someone that usually has to go a little bit wider then hip width apart or your knees have to point out in order for you to squat. The foam wedges as well as the metal wedges come in sets of two so you can move them out as wide as you need to and angle them out so that you feel comfortable when you go into your squat. And if you need any of those wedges or ramps you can go down below in the description and click on one of my affiliate links which I will earn a small commission on if you buy it from me. So if you do that, thanks a lot. So to demonstrate this, I'm using an eight kilogram kettlebell here. This is about 18 pounds. You're gonna get onto the wedge and you're first gonna hold the kettlebell away from your chest slightly so that your elbows are reaching forward and wrapping around. You'll feel a little bit of a stretch in the upper back. You're then gonna just let your whole body as a unit shift backwards, which is gonna relax the lower part of the back and allow the pelvis to tuck under just a bit. From this position, you're going to try to maintain this stacked position of your rib cage over your hips as you inhale and go to the bottom. Then you're going to exhale to return, and that'll look like this. 
Inhale down, exhale up. You wanna keep the weight back through the heels and you wanna make sure that not only you have contact with the outer portion of your heel, but also the inner portion of your heel and the base of your big toe. Once again, you're gonna keep your weight shifted back throughout, inhale down and exhale up. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is instead of shifting the weight back and allowing the pelvis to tuck under naturally, people actually force their lower back into a more rounded and flexed position by doing the exaggerated tuck under. You actually don't wanna do this because it's not too good for your back and you're not gonna get the benefit out of the exercise. In terms of the amount that you might do of this exercise, that will depend on how it's being used in a program. I would say that quality is better than quantity when we're talking about performing this exercise. So shooting for five good reps is better than getting 15 half decent ones. However, if you're proficient with this lift, you could be using it up to 15 repetitions depending on how this is working in your program. Now the heels elevated squat can be used in a program in many different ways. So this can either be used as a warm up exercise, as a primary exercise, or as an accessory exercise. So I typically like to use this as a primary exercise when improving range of motion or mobility is the primary goal. If performance is the goal, I like to use this as either a warm up or an accessory exercise to complement and offset the effects of more high level lifts such as back squats or hinges. So now we're gonna do a set of 10 reps together. So we'll hold the weight, reaching forward with the elbows. We shift back into the heels. Make sure you have good solid contact with the foot. We allow that lower back to relax, so the butt tucks under. We're gonna inhale down, exhale up, 10 reps, here we go. Now, if you found this video helpful, give it the old thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll know I upload a new video, and then leave me a comment below with any questions you might have, and we'll follow up either below in the comments or in a future video.